uh, apologies. So uh, thank you for joining today. You know, this is the second Wednesday. Usually the meeting is on the first Wednesday, but I accidentally booked my return flight from India on the wrong date. And uh, I realized it after I had booked and everything was done. And, and so apologies for that, but thanks for still uh, sending the uh, sending photos and I'm really excited. So I had sent out the list of uh, uh, presenters because I, I just took the people who sent me photographs and just put together a, a, a slideshow. Uh, so their name is displayed on the front. So as soon as you see your name, please unmute yourself and then go through your slides. We only have 15 presenters this time and uh, minus one because one of them said uh, they're not able to make it. But So we only have 14. So we actually have extra time on our hands. So if you'd like to spend a few minutes explaining the photograph or talking about the story behind it, uh, you're welcome to do that. So, all right, I'm going to share my screen. Hope all of you can see this. Good, all right. Okay, so this is the Bring Your Own Photo Show. This has been very popular actually for a few years now. Uh, we used to have one in September and uh, we decided that we actually, based on the feedback from this group, in fact, uh, we decided to have one in April and one in September. And, and this year, the request was, if you have taken photographs since January of last year uh, through April of this year, then you know please pick a few and share your story. So. Um, having said this, Uma Shankar, you're first to go. So please let me know when you're ready and I'm happy to move yeah. the slides for you. Yeah, I'm ready. Hey, Shri, nice to meet you again. And, uh, nice, nice to see to you, meet yeah. You all. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, I remember doing this for the first time in 2022, I guess. Um, yeah. Then uh, Back then, I was the first presenter. Uh, oh, okay. Wow. I, I, I missed the last year for some reason. I'm doing it again this year. I, I, I kind of send the pictures pretty early. I think that I'm usually late, but I, I end up sending it early. So, uh, yeah, good to be here. Um, so, yeah, I, I have seven pictures. Uh, the first four of them were taken back um, in India um, late last year where we spent some time. And the last three were taken here in the Bay Area. So, I, I think this uh, is a great blue heron, if I'm not wrong. Uh, I think the the story uh, behind this picture is that the 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 angle at which you're looking at it, right? So, so this was taken at a place called uh, Nalsarovar Bird Sanctuary. It's in the western part of India, where the only way to access the uh, marshes is through uh, is using uh, boats that are uh, like propelled using those long poles. So no motorized boats, nothing. So you're pretty much uh, sitting very close to the water level. So you get these kind of cool shots. Yeah. Beautiful. It's a purple heron, um, Omar. It's a purple heron. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, moving on, uh, I, I think this is a purple swamp, a purple head swamp hen, I believe, right? More hen, yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. yeah. So, so again, taken at the same place, again, uh, you know, nice uh, eye level shot. Uh, yeah. The, 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 again, I, I don't think we, we see this bird here in the US except for in Florida, I think. So it's right. nice to see this, yeah. Um, moving on. Yeah, this is, I think, a very common bird in India called the black drongo. Uh, I think the one thing that I noticed with uh, birds, especially in India, is that they're not as skittish as the ones that we see here. I mean, I could get pretty close uh, to get pictures. Um, I believe maybe it's they're used to people. I don't know, maybe, maybe they're used to people not uh, hunting them and things like that. I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm just uh, probably overthinking it, but that's that's one thing that I uh, I, I realized that when, when I went to India. And the next picture is again the same thing. I was very close to this, uh, wow. I, think it's a, I think this is a uh, white breast uh, kingfisher. White throated, right? white white -throated, -throated kingfisher. kingfisher. Yeah, I was yeah. pretty close to this bird. I mean, I'm probably maybe 10 feet away from it and it didn't finish. I mean, it was there for, I was just sitting there <laughs> for me to take all. I even moved quite a bit so that I get the background completely blurred. So yeah, I had a lot of uh, time taking the uh, series of these, I mean, these series. Oh, you're very lucky. This this bird is extremely skittish, actually. Yeah, no, not over there. I took many, many more pictures of the, the kingfishers over there, and, and they were all like there, I mean, <laughs> waiting to be Beautiful. taken photos. Yeah. All right, moving on. Yeah, this one is local. This is in Edlevin. Um, it's in, uh, I think, the Sandy Wool Lake. Um, so I think one of the good things about that lake is that you can pretty much 
sit right next to the the water right i mean uh, if you, there are some areas in, in that lake so i took this picture literally my monopod was inside the water and the camera was a couple of inches um, you know about the water level so i could get this nice reflection on this uh, on this american pelican i believe yeah yeah, moving on. Yeah, this one is an interesting shot. There's a story. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it has a fish in its mouth, but that's not the catch. The fish is still attached to a um, fishing line. Okay, you guys can, can you guys uh, see that? Yes, so the no fishing idea. line is, yeah, the fishing line is pulling on the birds, um, the wings. And I think it's, it's, it's I think, I don't know. I, there was nobody there. I didn't realize this when I took the picture. I thought I got a nice shot because it was, it, it, it got the fish. But when I came home to process the picture, I realized that, oh my God, there's a fish and it's still stuck to the line. I hope it let it go. Um, I hope it didn't, uh, you know, uh, eat it. So. Oh boy. Yeah. All right, uh, moving on. again. Yeah, this is in the same place at Levin. Uh, again, uh, I think it's night heron flying by pretty close. Yeah, th those are some of the pictures and you know some stories Beautiful. behind that. And yeah, th thanks, thanks for uh, the time and thanks for <laughs> listening to my uh, story. No, oh, beautiful. Okay. All right. So Par Parham said uh, he, you know, they won't be be able to make it. I'm going to skip through his uh, presentation, but I actually don't know anything about the, the photo or the story, okay? Uh, but he, they had some like really, really amazing images. So great shots. Um, Juliana, I thought I saw your name. Are you here? Yes, I'm right here. Oh. Perfect. Please let me know when you're ready and I can move the slide. So, uh, yeah, uh, just uh, I'll start my, no. no oh, okay, yep. <laughs> so um, in um, pursuing my bucket list, uh, this February I went to Minnesota uh, and visited the very famous Saks Dim Bog. It's a, I, I think it's mostly a winter birding area, but they have different birds in the summer. However, in winter, the main attraction um, are the owls. So in principle, you could see uh, four different owls. So let's start with the first one. Okay. Next. Okay, this is a barred owl, and it was quite close to, to me, but um, it didn't do much of anything. It just, uh, it just stared. Next one, on the other hand. Next. Yes, that was a much more interesting uh, situation. This is a northern hawk owl. And this owl caught um, a vole and then proceeded to commute between a post and this uh, conifer. And I don't think it was decided, uh, had decided where he wanted to eat the vole, but eventually he ate it inside this tree. And I did go. Um, behind uh, so I could witness what he was doing, but it was very dark in there. So mm -hmm. this is uh, a, a photograph of the owl after uh, its meal. So now I'm going to go to the next story, but not the next picture. So the, the third owl that is possible in uh, in that area is the great gray owl. And the fact is there were a few owls around when I was visiting, but they're very hard to see. I would um, liken the situation to being on a safari in Africa, where when there is a kill, you get 25 
vehicles, safari vehicles descending on it. So this, this was a similar situation. If somebody saw a great gray owl, then you got 25 cars running to, to find it. But the distances are such that by the time you got to the place, you couldn't yeah. see any owls. I mean, the, the owl was long gone. So to make up for that, now we can go to the next slide. Um, I'm showing you a great gray owl that I um, photographed in Finland in May of 2023. And this was a female uh, sitting on a nest not doing very much. I mean, the, the eyes were moving left and right a little bit. So um, um, what was interesting to me, it has its tail wrapped around because uh, the nest is too small for it to fit in <laughs> completely. So um, I, I felt that I was missing on all these owls in uh, Minnesota. So a month later, I went to Canada and I got my other two owls that I didn't see in Minnesota. Next. Oh, wow. So this is the great gray owl from, uh, from uh, Canada. And that was a very rewarding shoot because the owl was very active. It was flying from here to there and so on. So I have all kinds of photographs, but since uh, we're only allowed seven, this is the one you are going to see. And then next, um, I finally saw my first snowy owl. Well, that was, th this is a juvenile and this one was very skittish. So it was around just for less than two minutes. So, um, and it was fairly far away. So it was hard to photograph. But anyway, I got four, ow four owls this winter. So I'm pretty pleased with this. Uh, next. Well, finishing with the owls, uh, one of the things I liked a lot in um, Canada was the spite be between two um, um, pheasants. So I've never seen two male pheasants together. We used to have one pheasant in the parking lot of the Palo Alto Baylands, but uh, it's it's been gone for probably 10 years by now but anyway these two were fighting for females territory etc and they put on a very nice show so uh next my last shot is from uh, minnesota and this was not at the bog this was in duluth the city um, this is a bohemian waxwing, and I was very keen on uh, seeing this bird because it has this gorgeous design on its wings. So this completes my presentation. Wow. A excellent shots, by the way. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, we probably all have the same question um, about the timing and which place in Canada and, and Minnesota, but that's really fantastic. You saw those owls. That's it. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. All right, Judy. Yeah, I have to unmute. Um, oh. Go ahead and show <laughs> yeah. the first photo. Thank you. Excellent. So I was in um, Alaska uh, last summer in August, and we went to Lake Clark National Park. If you've never been there, it's about an hour's flight in a small plane from Anchorage. 
so it's on Cook Outlet. And we were mostly photographing bears, but we had an opportunity one morning to go to a place called Duck Island, which is this very small island. Um, well, it's about a 45 minute boat trip. And the puffins there, um, it's very rocky, this beautiful, um, probably granite. And um, there was a colony of northern puffins. So, or, or yeah, so they're, they're, they're horned puffins. So they're different from Atlantic uh, mm -hmm. puffins that you see in Newfoundland and on the East Coast. So um, they were pairing up. Um, we didn't see any babies because they were way back in the rocks, but so here is one of the, one of the puffins. Okay. Next one. And there, so there were many couples and they seemed quite devoted to each other. They, I think puffins are just, they're just strange looking, you know, the markings are so, uh, unusual. So, um, this was a pair. Okay. The next one. And I like this one because it's that frontal, that frontal look. And um, so I liked, um, you know, getting that face, face to face. Okay. And then uh, often when the couples were together, they were kind of billing and cooing, um, uh, kind of doing their little, oh, yes, you're my mate. I recognize you. Um, be nice to me or whatever is going through their minds. Um, and I just, um, we saw a lot of this kind of uh, couple behavior, which was just uh, charming and really fun to see. Um, so they were kind of putting their beaks together, kind of nuzzling each other. So it was really very nice. Okay, next one. And this, you can see those little, those feet are really grabbing the rock is rough. You can see there's texture to the rock and it's just holding on and then using its wings and it was walking up this slope. And I thought that was really a different, kind of a different view to see it um, doing that. Okay. Next one. And I didn't get any coming in. I just couldn't get, I couldn't get them focused fast enough. Um, but I did get this one leaving. They're going out, out fishing. And I like the head on the, the front face um, as it's flying toward me. So I like that one. And I think there's just one more. And then when they, they do um, bob around in the water and when they take off, they like a lot of birds, they walk on the water and you can see this whole trail of how it was running along the flower, uh, along the water to get lift off. So, um, so that was uh, really fun to see. So that's it. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. You're very welcome. Judy, sorry, where was where were these taken? Alaska, you said. Huh? Alaska, yeah, on the okay. on Cook Inlet, which goes okay, um, from the the Pacific Ocean into Anchorage, and evidently it's called that because Captain Captain Cook hoped it was a passage that would go all the way to through the Atlantic, but of course it didn't do that. It ends pretty much at Anchorage. But it's tidal. It has a uh, big, big tidal changes, second only to the one in uh what Newfoundland uh on the Bay of Fundy. And um so anyway. It's a great place to see bears. We saw baby bears. bears. We saw lots of bears. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like a fun trip. It was. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We have Alok. Hi, everyone. My name is Alok. Uh, this is my first uh, meeting here. Uh, so thank you for having me here. Um, Welcome. I, I did a lot of birding back in India in the 90s and uh, then kind of started again here in 2020 or so, and but stopped. Uh, because of personal reasons, uh, that made it really hard for me to do anything that I enjoyed uh, until recently. And uh, last month, I kind of was able to go out for a bit after a lot of time and at least do a little bit of birding. Uh, I haven't gone since then, but hopefully things will improve. 
so I only have one or two photos here because um, uh, I just wanted to share kind of what I saw. And I was in Berkeley, so I went to Albany Berg for people who know you know this area. Um, and uh, so we can look at the pictures now. Yeah, this is um, uh, one of the most common birds here, and as hummingbird. And I saw this bird kind of on the side of a trail, and it uh, was just hanging out there. And actually, it would fly from like one branch to other, it's kind of triangulating its position between three different spots. It would go from one spot to the next spot, and then back, and sometimes to a third spot. So this is one where the bird is stretching, and the sunlight kind of makes the wings look really nice. I thought. And uh, I'm pretty happy with this shot. And uh, the, what I did in, eventually was to pre-focus the camera on this branch. And I wanted to kind of take an action shot. So whenever the bird would kind of come back, I would just click away and see, hopefully get some good photos of the wings and stuff like that. And so if you look at the next photo, I think I have one more, <laughs> I forgot. Uh, yeah, this one. Uh, Basically, this is the bird like that just came and landed kind of, and I, I took a photo uh, right at the same exact moment. And uh, I was trying to get like the background to be fairly smooth, but I also noticed the gaps in the leaves, which made a kind of nice circular uh, pattern. It was really windy. I wanted to get the background to be a little bit more closer to like the, the center or the, the head, but the uh, everything was moving uh, around quite a bit, so that never happened, but I'm pretty happy with this shot as well. And that's it, I think. So thank you. Well, well thank you, Alok, and, and uh, welcome back. I'm glad you're getting into it again, and it looks like it's like biking. You don't forget your skills. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, it's a great shots, actually, and the hummingbirds are not easy usually to, to, yeah. to photograph either, so nicely done. Thank you. And please look up... Uh, scvas.org. Uh, the organization itself has actually a lot of bird uh, birding trips uh, on the on the website, yeah. and uh, you know, and then again, you know, groups like this who are actually eager to uh, go shoot together and things like that. So, I'm yeah, sure I'm sure you'll find some friends to go around. Yeah, that, that's definitely the plan. Hopefully, it works out. Thank you again. Excellent. All right. Next, we have Leah. Hello. I so, hope I said your name correctly. I'm sorry if I yeah, mispronounced. Yeah, no, Lee is fine. It's absolutely okay. fine. Um, so all my pictures are from uh, Galapagos Islands trip that I did last November and December. I have way more than seven. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, so many more. Um, but uh, these are at least birds that I had never seen. And before you get the last picture, I'll have to have a story about it. Or on the last picture, I'll have a story. All right, go ahead. Sorry, can and everybody else mute their phones, please? Colin is not muted. Uh, I can't see who it is, but okay. I, okay, I think it's okay now. Okay, go ahead. All right. All righty, this is a swallowtail gull, which I had never seen before. This is a male. Um, this was one of the first pictures I took when we got on uh, one of the first islands the first day. And he was just so pretty. And I wish that I could actually show you the female too. It was actually a juvenile female and she was just delightful. So, so pretty. But uh, these guys, you know, pair up and mate, but there was no mating at the time. Um, when we were there, but uh, yeah, it's like everything is on lava too, by the way. I don't know if anybody's ever been to Galapagos, but it seems like everything is lava. And I tried to get pictures that didn't have a bunch of poop on them. So, you know, it's very hard. <laughs> All right, go to the next one. So, you know, we have a lot of cormorants in California and obviously around, right? But this is the first time I actually saw a flightless cormorant. They, there are, no predators for them there. So they don't need to fly away. Um, so they have these tiny little wings and they kind of look like little Tyrannosaurus, you know, wings or something like that in the front. But uh, yeah, they're just these tiny little wings. They're just, they would hop around um, on the rocks and they're apparently really fast swimmers. Go ahead, next. Blue-footed boobies, of course. That's one of the things that everybody wants to go see. 
um, we saw the blue footed boobies diving like missiles into the water in groups of 10 or 15 at a time. It was just amazing. Um, but uh, the blue footed boobies were everywhere. And one of the things, if you've never been to Galapagos, is that the birds are not afraid of you. None of the wildlife is afraid of you. Around here, if you even just walk anywhere close to, you know, any kind of bird that's in the water, they're already, already you know, just, you know, um, swimming away from you. Not there. They fly right up to you, the little ones and stuff like that. They walk around your, your feet. Um, they're chirping all over the place because they're just looking for food, you know, and they're not asking you for food because no one is giving out food. Um, but, uh, but the blue-footed boobies were really, really cool to see. I really like that. I like this, uh, this image, how they were um, just sitting there um, of the rocks. Now, you got to understand, a lot of these pictures, I am not on land. I am in a tiny boat that is bobbing in the water. So for me to have a, an, any focused picture at all is pretty good. So, okay, next this is a smooth billed black Annie. This is the only one that I had kind of a problem trying to get a picture of that would kind of try to fly away a little more than the others. But it was just such a unique looking bird that um, I don't have a lot of pictures of it, but this was probably the best one that I had of it. Just so different. The next is a yellow warbler. There are yellow warblers everywhere, but um, they were everywhere here too. And I really kind of like the reflection, you know, in the water. And, you know, that's just, um, you know, from the tides and things like that. But, uh, cause we didn't get in a lot of rain when we were down there, surprisingly, it was good. But against the black lava, she just, it just pops. Yeah. Next. It's a waved albatross. Um, we could not go to a couple of the islands because of bird flu, so we didn't get to see the red-footed boobies. We did uh, the the colonies of them. We did not get to see the Nazca boobies, the colonies of them, nor the waved albatross. Um, it's just it, uh, we were we were actually on our ship when we took these picture, this particular picture. Um, we would literally try to find the group of them that was out in the in the ocean, they would be bobbing around the ocean and they would kind of like take the ship toward it a little bit and they would fly off so we could take pictures. So, but they just kind of did a little loop around and, uh, you know, did it again. So this is one of the birds taking off. Okay, next picture. All right, best one, best picture of the entire, the entire uh, trip. This is a Galapagos hawk. It's a juvenile Galapagos hawk. This hawk, um, literally, Sorry, it must have flown ten feet. Ten feet for me. Okay, so. Somebody else. Thank you. Um, we were walking on the beach, and there was a a great blue heron that was just kind of like walking down the beach, just you know, dawdling around, no big deal. Walked right past one of our people, you know, as he was sitting on the beach, and I was like, okay, well, I better get out of the way of this thing because it's walking right toward me. And so it, you know, I just kind of got out of its way. It walked down the beach. I started walking down the beach the other direction and, you know, was taking pictures of a sea turtle or something that was on the beach. And we heard a squawk and it was the great blue heron that had come out of the trees. And so I just literally turned around and picked up my camera, aimed, what is that? And some, and the guide said, it's a hawk. So I aimed, I, just literally got enough time to have it in focus and just literally like this the whole way until it went to a tree. Never took my finger off the shutter and prayed that any of the shots would be in focus. So that's the best one. And I have the whole series too, and it's so cool. It's really, really cool. Yeah. Anyway, Galapagos Hawk. That's it. These are beautiful. Absolutely. And now, now I'm actually beginning to think, why did I ask only for seven photos? So, <laughs> I know, I know. You, you, oh my gosh. You, I was like, oh my God, I could have had so many more. Yeah. So many so, more species, you know, too. Yeah. And it, uh, last time we had 22 presenters and each of them had 10 photos each. And that, that became a little difficult to handle. Yeah. So, yeah. but uh, Leah, this is, this is one question maybe for the next season. 
Uh, if you have enough photographs to share from Galapagos in terms of birds, uh, we should talk about a presentation. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I'll, you... I'll, I'll try. I'll try to put yeah. one together. Sure. I'd be more than happy yeah. to. Yeah, we can yeah. talk later. Yeah, we can Absolutely. schedule something. Yeah. Absolutely. Wonderful. Thanks. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. There are some questions and comments. I don't know if anybody's monitoring them, but uh, let's see if. Uh, no, nothing about this. Okay. All right. Next is Amitabha. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. Uh, this is my third time, I think, being yep. able to present something. Um, Welcome back. Yeah. So uh, this year, I haven't, well, this year in the US, I haven't been able to go on out birding because it still feels like winter. But fortunately, we made a trip to India uh, in the in in December last year. So all the seven photos today I'm going to present are from India. And just to give you a sense of where this place is, I'm going to paste a link in the chat. So if you're interested, uh, go and see the link. And this uh, all these photos are around a lake in a city called Calcutta, uh, which is my hometown. So let's get started. Okay, so this is called a black hooded oriole. And I'm fascinated by the bright yellow color it has all over its body. And, you know, it's very contrast that it has a black hood and a black head. So here it's, it's kind of feeding in on some centipede. It was trying to, you know, bob up its beak uh, up and down for a while so it was trying to munch it I guess but you know they would just hop around from one branch to the other and uh, searching for food and uh, I just thought this was a great bird uh, I don't see the orioles here so I'm sure it's it's like a tropical bird that we find in India and other South Asian countries next one um, this is called a blue-throated barbet, and so there are many kinds of barbets that we find in India, and this is a very small one, uh, measuring maybe like uh, about six inches, and it was trying to, um, you know, uh, make, make a nest, I guess. It's trying to uh, pick the woods from the branch, and it was just throwing out the wood dust with its beak, uh, so I got a bunch of shots uh, while while the bird was doing that and uh, you know this is one i shared because it, all, all these wood dust are in the air and this was about i would say like uh, maybe like 30 feet above ground so i was focusing my lens and uh, trying to get this shot i love the color uh especially the blue color that it has uh, uh, on its throat uh, and it's beautiful next please and this is another kind of barbet called the lineated barbet. And these are uh, a little bigger. So these, I think these are close to a feet, like 12 inches. And they uh, have a very unique uh, border, the, the yellow border around the eye. Uh, and they make a very weird sound. So it's like hoop, hoop, like that. And, uh, you know, they, they would perch high up in the trees and just hop from one branch to another. Um, I think they have very, um, very deep um, green wings. And that's very beautiful. If you, if you see it from the back, uh, you know, on the internet, they're very beautiful. Okay. Next one. This is a painted stork. Uh, these are one of the storks that we, that we find there. And this was taken over the lake when, um, you know, the stork was finding branches to make its nest on the top of a tree. So during the winter, these are, you know, migratory birds that, uh, that come down from the southern part of the Himalayan plains. And there are lots of them uh, in, around that time. They are there for about uh, maybe a month and a half or two months at most, where they lay eggs, raise their um in offsprings and then they fly away so um i had a lot of fun taking lots of pictures but i thought this was 
you know, kind of a shot that uh, that's in the air, that it's it's moving at a high speed, carrying a branch. So uh, thought of sharing that. Okay, next one. So this is a red vented bulbul. Um, again, this was around the lake, uh, but it a little more, um, you know, where there are lots of uh, trees around the pathways around the lake. And you would notice the the red uh, under the tail. That's a very unique feature of these bulbuls. Um, they make very, very nice songs, um, very chirpy. So I, I was able to take this. I think I took a few shots, but this is the one where the bird was almost turtled uh, to see somebody you know, pointing a big lens and trying to take a picture. Um, these are very small, actually. These are maybe like uh, five to six inches, but you know, in the picture, when you zoomed, it, it looks pretty big here. And next one. Um, this is called a Rufus Trippi. Um, and it's a pretty long tailed birds, um, again, by the lake. Uh, I think they have this beautiful, um, like, like a, what is this color? Maybe maroonish color on the wings. Um, so, they make a lot of noise. I think, um, you know, even just by themselves, um, they would just perch on a tree branch and make lots and lots of noises. So you could, you could hear them from, you know, hundreds of meters. Okay. I think next one, that's the last one I have. And these are the spotted outlets. And these, I believe are just uh, two very tiny, uh, you know, they were just inside their um, nest, which is basically a hole in the branch of in the branch of a big tree. And uh, you know, you would notice that the right one probably doesn't uh, even able to. Well, maybe it's not even able to open its eyes. So I think it's it's very young, and it it was very difficult to spot them because, as you can see, it's more like camouflaging with the with the brown of the tree. So I think this was, uh, I've seen great owls here, uh, with, you know, horned owls here, but this was the first time I was able to uh, shoot two very small owlets in India. So um, I recently I started, um, uh, uh, you know, photographing with, with uh, mirrorless cameras and uh, I just moved to mirrorless from, from the digital uh, DSLR just a couple of months back. So I'm trying to, get used to it but next time when i come back uh, in the next episode maybe i'll have some pictures with with the mirrorless camera it's uh, it's still very new to me but i'm i'm, I'm getting used to it okay Sridhar, thank you so much that's you all i have a lot of fun yeah yeah mirrorless are fantastic and thank um you. amitabha the orioles so the one that you showed is is in india but we actually have a couple of different orioles here in the bay area too uh, oh. just yeah, they, they have a beautiful sound. Actually, in spring, they do migrate through California. So, and, and there's a couple of spots that you can see them. Different types. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Beautiful shots, by the way. Thanks. All right. We have Alexander next. Hey, guys. This is my first time with this group. So, welcome. Be welcome. Here and seeing all these awesome photos. Yeah. Uh, Photos I have are just a collection really of local birds from California. So they're not, you know, as exotic as the Galapagos or Alaska, but <laughs> <laughs> so if hey, California birds are pretty. Okay. I, I like them. Being from England, they're they're super interesting to me. So yeah. all right. So if you move to the first image. Oh, this is a fun shot. I was at Bixby Park and I saw these killdeer just kicking about the scrubland. So I laid down on my belly just to try and get you know, at, at grass level with them. And as I was doing that, one of them hopped up on the back of the other. And as I, at the time, didn't really have much experience taking kind of fun action shots, I kind of panicked and took as many shots as possible <laughs> to try and capture this. Um, I think it's kind of fun and researching it, it seems like Kilda do this sometimes, I'm not sure why. Um, but I'm curious to see if they stack in twos, threes or fours, but I've seen a few of two. So that was a fun image. If we go to the next slide. 
Uh, I went on a vacation to Yosemite when my parents were here and we stayed at um, a place in Groveland, which had these big uh, decks, which were sort of built up into a hillside. So you could be at kind of tree level with a lot of different trees, and which was great for, you know, looking at these birds at eye, eye height. And this is um, one bird I got. I kind of like the, the composition here. I'm not exactly sure what this bird is. So if anyone knows or could help me idea, that'd be much appreciated. Um, yeah, I really kind of like the, the colors in this and the, the pale greens in the background and the reds on the, the top left. Looks like a downy, downy woodpecker, uh, but I, I can't see the pattern on the back, but it looks like a downy. Okay, thanks. If others have, sorry, if others have any feedback, you know, please let us know. Uh, if we move to the next slide. Uh, this is at Bixby Park again, and I, I started going there last year, and I would see this Harrier flying around, um, but usually I'd be concentrating on something else. It would swoop over, and I'd kind of try and intercept it or go after it, but it would always have its back to me and kind of elude me. And then one day it happened to fly directly at me, and uh, I was lucky enough to get a few shots. Um, I kind of really like this one because you can see, see Shoreline Amphitheater in the background, and one of the things I really like about birding in the bay is sort of, you know, how close these birds are to urban environment. Um, sorry, sorry, give me one second. Celebrating French and beyond. Yeah, they're calling me a need to mute. Uh, it seems like we're okay. Yeah, um, go ahead. Yeah, I was, was really happy because I would go back there and intermittently see this bird, but never quite get an image of it. So to to have it fly directly at me and have something kind of interesting in the background, I was kind of happy with this this shot. I like how it's uh, balancing in the air with the Santa Cruz Mountains behind too. Uh, if we move to the next slide. Oh, I really like California quail, but they seem to just appear randomly whenever I'm out. Whenever I go looking for one, I can't find them. And this was on a, a trip to Point Reyes where I went actually to photograph elk. And I was sitting there taking pictures of elk and on the, the track back, there was just little quail just sitting in a bush and it was not bothered about anything. Um, so it gave me lots of, you know, opportunity to get the backgrounds kind of clean and just to play around with it. Um, it was sort of so calm and there were so many elk. I actually have a shot too of the quail in the foreground and a, a bull elk in the background, which is fun. Yeah. The other thing I kind of like about this image is this guy has um, two top knots, it looks like, as opposed to the one. I don't know, you know what that particularly delineates, but I, some other quail shot images I have, they only have a single top knot, as opposed to this one's two. Hmm. Uh, if we go to the next slide. I think, yeah, this is a very common bird. <laughs> and I really like color. And so I was at um, Ed Levin one day, and there was kind of, nothing colorful around but there was this black phoebe that was just kind of sitting on this post and it was so kind of calm and not bothered by my antics that it allowed me to kind of roam around and get this part red bush part green bush in the background to really you know draw some color out of this this scene so i kind of really like this the, the contrast between kind of the the drab maybe bland bird but this really colorful background and i think i have just one more yeah, so I had took a trip down to Palm Springs and I really, really wanted to see a roadrunner. <laughs> and I was in the hotel room one morning drinking my morning coffee and I looked out the window down at the parking lot and a roadrunner just came cruising across the parking lot. So I went down there and this guy was out there and he kind of um, flew up onto this little uh, pedestal and was just kind of sunning himself. And he was on a pedestal and behind him was this kind of condo complex, which had some nice curated... Um, Bougainvilleas. So there was this big yellow bush behind him. And then I have another uh, image somewhere of a red bush behind him. But I kind of really like this image because of the color in the background and how round <laughs> this particular roadrunner looks like. Uh, looks. So I think that's uh, all I have. So thanks for letting me present my photos and looking forward to seeing many more. Yeah, no, the one, these are wonderful. Uh, thanks for sharing. And I, I hope you get to see more birds in the Bay Area to photograph soon, so. All right. Next is Kobe. Kobe, are you around?
it doesn't look like it. Yeah, we might have to come back to him if he's uh, this com comes on later. All right, I saw you. Welcome. Hi. Hi. Thanks how for are you? Us. Good. Of course. Yes. Trying to find a lot of dirt. That's another story. <laughs> so if you have a body you need buried, let me know. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> no, I am. Um, so anyway, the last time one of these events was held, I was actually in Indonesia. And so I included a couple images from that September time, which including the first image, if you can bring it up, please. This first image, which is a lilac kingfisher, which is a bird endemic only to the island of Sulawesi. And I was there for a week of muck diving, diving on Lembe. And my last day, though, on Lembe, I actually went back onto mainland and spent the day trekking through the jungle that is Tenkoko Nature Preserve, which is part of Tenkoko National Park. I had a great guide, and we saw like over 30 species of birds, including half a dozen species of kingfisher. This is just one of them. An ochre-bellied bubuk, ashy woodpecker, nesting knobbed hornbills, which when they're up in the air and flying into their to their tree, they really do sound like helicopters. Plus, then we saw some mammals like the couscous, the gursky tarsiers, and then, of course, the crested black macaques. But that trip did require me being up and on the road at like I was up at 3 a.m. and we left at 4 a.m. So by the time this image was taken at one in the afternoon, I was pooped out. So then we can go on to the next image, please. So then after Lembe, I flew to Papua and I spent two weeks on this teeny tiny little wooden boat diving some of the most remote reefs imaginable. Um, but then after that, I headed to Bali and this image, which is a Savannah night jar, was taken at the West Bali National Park. And it turns out when I mentioned getting up at 4 a.m. was was kind of, you know, ooh, long. I had to get up at 2 a.m. to meet my guide and went in West Valley because I was staying in Gaza. Um, but it was great. We saw blue-tailed bee eaters, yet more kingfishers and herons and egrets and Sulawesi starlings, even an ornamental pied bill and a black-thighed falconet, which was really cool. Um, then I spent, let's see, I spent my autumn months dealing with various inept county employees, which has to do with the dirt I mentioned. Um, and winter was long and hard up here on the mountains. So when the opportunity popped up to get away for a bit, I literally jumped on a boat, another boat. This was one of those huge boats. It's actually a lo the love boat, if you're familiar with that TV show. Because I'm a voice actor and a couple of the coaches I've worked with before had put together the series of workshops that took place during the at sea days. But then during the port days, I organized some bird watching, which resulted in the first of the next pictures. If you can pull that up, please. I went to Puerto Vallarta because it was the love boat. Um, and my guide canceled an hour before I was due off the boat. And I was like, oh, no, what am I going to do? So I did some quick internet searching and discovered that the Jardines Botanicos de um, Vallarta are just, you know, about an hour south. So I got off the boat, I hired a driver at the taxi stand, and then I had this great time just hiking up and down all these paths because it's more than just a, what we would think of a botanical garden. It's kind of um, a nature preserve. So I hiked down to the River Harcones and I saw some black phoebes and snowy egrets like we would find here. But then I also saw this lovely Mexican cacique who was happily munching away at some, some flowers. And then if you could bring up the next slide, please, or the next image. My next port of call was Manz Manzanillo. And thankfully my guide, Oveth, didn't flake on me. So we drove up to Naranjo and we managed to, let's see, we saw over 40 species, including hooded orioles, which were down there obviously, cause it's winter. And then we saw multiple species of flycatchers and kingbirds. And then I brought this one um, to the to be presented because this was a, actually a lifer for my guide, Oveth, this Merlin. He was so stoked. He called me his good luck charm. It was fun, too, because I would practice my Spanish and he would practice his English. So that was really good. And then the next one, please. I did book one cruise sanctioned thing. And it was in Mazatlan, and it was billed as this combo lunch estuary boat tour. And I had some qualms about it, but it was fun. It was. I met some people, and I saw a lot of birds, including, like, 
basically at a porn shoot with this super curious pelican, but I'll, I'll, I'll show that later. Um, but we saw so many ospreys, every type of heron imaginable, tricolor, great blue, night herons. They were just all over. Everywhere you looked, there were birds. Even saw a black hawk. And then I saw this pair of comorants, and I loved the, the inner species because they don't eat the same food. So they don't compete. So they're more than happy to hang out. So that was really fun. And that's one of them. If we go to the next slide, I love showing comparison shots. And this shot was actually shot right from where I'm sitting right now. Um, about 95% of my birding is done from right here because we live in this small, on a small ranch in the East San Jose foothills. And we focus on two things. We build race cars and we restore native habitat. And so right now we've documented well over a hundred species of birds ranging from, oh my, um, who presented before me, uh, uh, I can't remember, sorry, but you mentioned quail. Not We have herds, herds of quail. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. Um, we have tons of swallows this time of year. We have a nesting pair of red tails. We've got nesting white-tailed kites. And then we have more common species, like this on the left is, you know, just a typical house finch with a typical pine siskin next to him. And, oh, and following from the Oriole talk, we usually have five to six pairs of bullocks and hooded nesting here, and they just arrived, so I'm stoked. And then if we go on to almost the last shot, we also have Turkey, like this little girl who's standing on a dinosaur. And she was actually an orphan raised up by Wildlife Center Silicon Valley, and I volunteer there. And so when she and another youngster needed someplace to go, they were actually released here on our land in October, and they both still visit regularly. And she, in particular, loves to perch on Marie, which is the name of that dinosaur there. Um, yeah, she just loves it, and we don't know why but it's cute. I get great photo ops from her. And then the last image, I mentioned the porn shoot with the pelican. And this was, I was on the prow of the boat, looking up, laying on my back with my camera, you know, you know, in front of me. And this bird was standing on the, the, the cover that goes over where all the passengers normally sit. And he was just sitting there for, I don't know, about five minutes. And I got some fun pictures. Um, and that's the end of my pictures. But before you go on to the next one, I do want to plug this uh, Santa Clara Valley Audubon Society Birdathon. I mentioned it at the start, but everyone may not have been here. The Birdathon is indeed underway. If you're unfamiliar with the Birdathon, it's like a bikeathon or a swimathon or a, you know danceathon. It's their way of raising money to fund their educational programs. The event solely raises funds for educational programs, including the Wellness Discovery Program, plus free educational programs to Title I schools. And fundraising is primarily done by teams. Each team selects a single day within the event window. And on that day, they then head out to the location or several locations, depending upon, and they bird watch. So you could support this you guys, especially since SCVAS, which is a mouthful, you know, sponsors this group, you can support it in several ways. You could pledge money to support a team. You could pledge on a per bird basis or a simple flat donation for a team, or you could actually join a team. To find the team information, you would go to the SCVAS org website and go to Birdathon and you'll find teams. And you could specifically, I'm going to do self-promotion, you could join my team. For the third year in a row, I'm hosting a team, and it has a very magical twist. You bird anywhere in Santa Clara County in the morning, and then you get to come here to the ranch, which is called Purgatory Auto Works and Dinosaur Farm, for lunch, and lunch is usually catered. And then you get to see the birds, you get to see the valley, we sit, we talk, you can take pictures. If you want to learn how to drive an excavator, I'll teach you, um, and it's really fun. But this is the third year. Last year, I think I had eight attendees. And so this year, I'm hoping to have another eight. So if you're interested, go to the scbs.org website. And there are other teams. You don't have to join mine. You could, but you don't have to. Um, and check it out. It, like I said, it is their one time of year that they're raising funds for just their educational stuff. I'm done plugging now. Thank you. Unless you have a body. You could bring the body with you. <laughs> Not today, not today. We're all good. Uh, I, I thank you so much. Actually, you made it so much fun. Uh, if you don't mind me asking, I, I strongly think you have more than seven photos you can share with this group. And 
I'm I'm yes. going to plug in to think about a, a full presentation next time. Um, it would be like gorilla birding because that's kind of what I do. I get somewhere, I'm like, right, where can I go, or how can I, I see. see birds? Yeah. Um, yeah but and then you, of you course the ranch. You travel, quite, you travel quite a bit though, so yeah. I, I hear from your story. So yeah, yeah. But then I could talk. I could just talk about the ranch and all we do here too. So oh, yeah. yeah. Or you could I come could and join my birdathon team. I am just thinking that is there is there a particular date? Yes, it is. I have to actually look. Oh my, I've forgotten when it is. Hold on. You would think I would know this, but no, because I'm dealing still dealing dealing with county and dirt. And you'll hear that story if you come here. Yeah. So look it up. You know, Birdathon I... teams. My team is Sunday, April twenty eighth. April twenty eighth. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for this you know, nice stories and beautiful pictures, by the way. All right. Next is Jeffrey. Hey, guys. Let me just say hi. Uh, this is also my first uh, meeting with you guys. And I'm more of a photographer than a birder. And my geographical area is mainly Santa Clara County. So. Oh, I was going to ask in this group. Last weekend, I was at the Baylands, and there were a group of photographers from Audubon photographing two fledgling hummingbirds being fed by a parent. And I'd already submitted my images for this, but that was a unique photo experience. Oh, beautiful. So I, don't know, I don't know if anybody put those in, but the next one of these you do. I'd be happy to put them in. Yeah. Yeah, we have so anyway. twice twice in the year now, uh, okay. once in April and once in September. So, you know, feel free. Okay. And I noticed nobody else mentions cameras, but I use uh, 200 yeah. to 600 Sony on a Sony A1 body. Fantastic. Okay. So if you start showing the pictures, I'll let you know what they are. Yeah. Oh, cedar waxwing in the backyard. So they eat the, uh, I think that's a toyon, and they just come in in flocks and pick through all the berries. I, th I find these beautiful birds, and I don't see them around very much, but that was a great photo opportunity. Okay, next. Oh, I forgot what this guy is. Um, this is over at the Baylands, and I thought the reflection on this guy was pretty cool. So I forgot. Do you guys might know the name? I think it was a. It looks like a spotted because, sandpiper, maybe. Yeah. So anyway, the lighting in the morning was pretty cool. So I caught him as he was feeding. Okay, get the next one. Um, kind of interesting, you know, the young egrets from the rookery come over to the um, baylands, and. They all feed in the little pond next to the nature center. And for some reason, they fight. They have old lake, but these two were in a territorial dispute over fishing rights. So one flew in, chased the guy in the foreground away, flew away, and nobody was left. Okay, next. A white crowned sparrow. And he's on top of I think that was the anise seeds. And I like the picture because it just looks like he was posing for an Audubon shot. Okay, next. Um, getting what this was. Dark eyed junco. Yes, okay. Because I had a purple Martin and a dark eyed junco confused. Okay. So this guy's in my backyard standing on the wisteria that's just about budding. And I had a nice clear sky behind him. Next. And I forgot what this one is now, too. Billet. Yeah, so I got, there was a whole flock of these in the water. And I happened to catch this guy flying right by. And I like the reflection. Beautiful. Okay, and I don't remember if there's any more. Oh, this is a uh, mockingbird. 
So I got him just as he took off from the post. And I think that was it, isn't it? I think so, yes. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah thanks for sharing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you know, you know, feel free to ask questions as well. And then, you know, people are interested in sharing camera details too. I'm always eager to hear what people use for shooting their photos. So, okay. It's good to hear that you use an alpha one. Okay. All right. Hi, Leah. Hi. Can Welcome you see back. me? Yes, I can. Yes. Okay. Let me know when you're ready. So, yes, I'm ready. All right. Uh, yeah, all of my pictures were taken from the car because I'm a little bit elderly and I'm having trouble with my, I was having trouble with my hip, so I couldn't really walk. So I had to do all of my photography and bird watching from the car. And I found two places that were really good for that. One is uh, the road from Alviso to the Don Edwards Wildlife Refuge. And this picture was taken there. It was uh, um, Cooper's hawk that was in a tree uh, in Don Edwards. And next. And the Cooper's hawk flew off and then in flew a white tailed kite. And so I took this picture also from the car, just leaning out basically, uh, pointing out the window. <laughs> and I, I thought he was very pretty. And and, uh, and I, I should say also that uh, I really can't hold heavy cameras. So I shoot everything with a um, Canon PowerShot 70 or a 60. And uh, it weighs about a pound and a half, which really is very useful for me. And it seems to work for me anyway. Next uh, photo, please. And this was taken when you when you drive to uh, Don Edwards the, uh, from Alviso, there's water on both sides. And there's lots of uh, black neck stilts and lots of avocets. And I thought this was an interesting picture with the triangular feet, red feet of the uh, black neck stilt. Next. Oh, and then I drove into uh, the um, parking lot uh, of Don Edwards, and there was a an a, 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 an outbuilding that was kind of apricot, and in front of it was a, um, a bush with this Bewick's wren on it. But I thought it was really a nice contrast to see the the background of the apricot background and the Bewick's wren. And again, I just took it out the window. Next. And the second place that I do my bird watching from the car is on Laguna Avenue, which is in Morgan Hill. And when you drive down, it's, it's just this very straight road that goes into, and it's a dead end road. And so you just drive down, you can't actually walk, but there's no path at all. So you just drive down and it's not heavily traveled. So people, if you stop and take pictures, people just go right by you um, in cars. And so anyway, uh, I went there and there's all this song of the Western Meadowlark. And this was a Western Meadowlark that was in the grass on the side of, of the road. And I, you always learn a little bit by taking photographs, I find, because I always thought metal larks had black on their chest, the V, the black V. But uh, I took this picture and I said, oh, well, look, look, that's sort of brown and, and black mixed. And so I looked it up and apparently there's no difference between male and female, but I'm thinking that this is maybe a either a young uh, meadow lark or it's one that's not in breeding season. Next. And then a, there's a fence uh, on one side of uh, Laguna Avenue, there's a fence. 
And on the other side, there's a, a, a telephone poles. And on the fence was this uh, Northern Harrier. And he was just kind of stretching his wing out. Uh, I thought that was kind of neat. And eventually he just flew off. But um, again, I just opened the window and took the picture. Okay. Next. And then uh, besides the meadowlarks all making a lot of really pretty song, uh, I went there another time and the red winged blackbirds were singing. And this is a red winged blackbird that's just sitting on the fence. So all of these were taken uh, just on in two locations. Okay, that's all. So it looks like your car is a nice blind. You just shoot shoot through the window there. Yeah, you know, just roll down the window and shoot through it. And also sometimes you can actually shoot through the, if the window isn't, dirty or anything, you just shoot right through the glass. Mm. But I find right. it's very uh, convenient uh, to to do. And, and really those two locations are conducive to birding from your car. <laughs> so. Great, great way to enjoy nature, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing. Mm -hmm. All right. Vinayak. Hey there, uh, can you hear me fine? Yes, welcome. Perfect. Yeah, thank you. Uh, this is my first time presenting at yes, yeah. uh, Bring Your Own Photos. Really enjoyed all the photos that everyone presented. Um, all my photos are from here in the Bay Area. This first one is a haunt grebe. Uh, usually the haunt grebes depart uh, like late winter, early spring or so. Uh, but this one uh, stayed back. This was at Shoreline Lake, I think, and stayed back in the summer. So got to see it in its breeding plumage. And uh, for this particular shot, the wind was such that its tufts were lifted, giving its characteristic horn shape. So uh, I like that about the photo. Uh, we can go next. Uh, this one is also at Shoreline Lake. This one was in fall of last year, and this is a common golden eye. Um, so I really liked uh, it was like preening and sort of bathing in the water. And uh, one of the times it came right up front, like straight on. And I took a few shots trying to get it in sort of this uh, symmetric shape. And uh, this one came out nice. Uh, we can go to the next one. All right, this is a yellow rumped warbler. Uh, this was taken in uh, sort of early spring of last year. Uh, usually we are used to seeing uh, yellow rumped warblers in their winter plumage with slightly drab and dull colors, but just before they take off, they develop these like bright grays and yellows and this female was like foraging. Um, this was, I think, in Bosona uh, Lake County Park on the um, ground. So I like the contrast of the colors it had with the green on the grass. So that's the yellow rum warbler. Uh, you can go next. All right, this one's a brown creeper. Uh, this one was taken uh, at Blackberry Farm. Um, we were sitting by a picnic bench and um, the brown creeper uh, came close to a tree nearby. And usually we have seen brown creepers many a times, like very well camouflaged going on a trunk. But this time I was able to see sort of its uh, beautiful feathering and sort of the white throat which stands out. So uh, that's why I like this one. And I also saw that um it has like its tail feathers sort of um sticking to the trunk similar to how a woodpecker uses it as um as another additional support so that was interesting to see uh we can go next all right this one is a western bluebird uh took this one in spring of last year 
uh, again with just generally with the theme of spring uh, had these like green shoots coming out of the tree and uh, that was uh, that's what I found interesting to contrast with the colors of the female western bluebird which were also getting brighter with the turn of the season. Uh, and then we can go next. I think this is the last one, maybe. Uh, yeah, so this is a great egret. Uh, this one also, I think I photographed at Shoreline Lake. Um, usually I've seen a lot of times great egrets like diving in and taking the fish and like pretty quickly uh, gobbling it up. Uh, this time around it waited for a moment with, with the fish in its beak and uh, I was able to capture sort of the droplets coming out along with the tail of the fish at the same time. So uh, I like that about the photo. Um, I think that is all, maybe. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, since uh, right. Elsie yeah. talked about the um, Birdathon, I would also um, advise people to check out Birdathon for SCVS, I volunteer as a um, um, field trip leader uh, at several uh, bird uh, walks and definitely Birdathon is a great way for people to get involved and uh, contribute to a great cause. Um, I and my wife also have a team and we go and photograph as many species of birds as we can. Uh, so feel free to check out the Birdathon page and uh, if you're interested. Uh, thank you, everyone. Hey, thanks, Vinayak. I was actually just going to plug in that same thing like you just said. Uh, you have been doing Birdathon for a few years now, so thanks for thanks for mentioning that. Yeah, thank you. And nice, nice photos, by the way. Yeah, thank you. And if oh. you check the chat, chat, I put a link, although the link is to my team, but you can find Vinayak's ben team as well. Mm -hmm. Same page. Perfect. And I'll send this in an email so people can have it. Thank Perfect. You. All right. Nikhil is next. I my face around. Ah. Nikhil? It doesn't look like he's there. You could treat them when they don't show up as a quiz and get people to identify the species. No, I'm going to charge him money for my coffee. Next time, next time he birds with me, he's going to pay for my breakfast. It's got some nice shots, but okay, he'll have to wait. All right, so I'm I'm last to go, and I was lazy. Uh, I I didn't prepare very well, but because I just went to India. I had a few photos that I could show easily, but uh, I apologize. I'm not trying to repeat the India theme here today, but here's a quick um, quick run through of you know of photos from my end. So um, I actually went for a tiger safari uh, in a, in a place called uh, Tadoba in Maharashtra, and in the hotel uh, we had a beautiful beautiful resort. They had some nice, nice, lovely gardens. And I could see this just absolutely stunning bird fly from, you know, one tree to the other. And I'd never seen it before. Uh, thankfully, I got uh, got a few shots. Not the best of the way because it is not looking at me. But this was the cleanest shot I could get with no nothing, you know, blocking it. Uh, this is called a common eora. Common eora. Tiny little bird, actually. This one is only about two to three inches long. That's it. This is another one of my favorite kingfishers there. It's actually called a common kingfisher, not because it is common, but uh, it is present, all in, I think, in many continents in the world. It's actually also seen in Africa, uh, and it's actually pretty common in, in uh, Europe as well. So that's why it's called a common kingfisher though you don't actually see it in all the field trips. Now, this guy was just sitting on and, and giving us a good pose. And it's again about five inches, maybe four to five inches 
tall, that's it, like tiny bird. So this was a lifer for me. Um, and uh, because I was really looking for uh, for the uh, the paradise flycatcher, and there are two morphs in this. One is the the white morph that you see here, and the other one is a rufous morph, which is a brown brown colored bird. I'd actually seen the brown colored bird before, but I had never seen the white morph. And there are theories that uh, when they sexually mature, the brown morph actually becomes a white morph, and then there's a theory that says no, they are two different birds. So I I will I don't know which exactly is true, but you know, seeing this in the forest actually made my day. This was absolutely stunning. Literally two shots and 10 seconds later this guy was gone. <clears throat> this is called an Indian roller. Uh, at the beginning of the, the show, somebody was telling us that you know the birds in India were not skittish, and then he was able to approach them. Uh, I think his luck was really on his side. Uh, the roller gave me the toughest shots. In fact, it would never allow me to come within 50 yards. And and any reason, any moment, and would fly away. This guy was thirsty. Uh, I think he came to the pond. Um, like there's a little bit of a muddle in, in, the, in the ground there. And I think that's probably why he allowed us to get close enough. But this is absolutely be beautiful bird, in fact. Um, Indian peacocks. So this was in my walk in, in my neighborhood and you could see and hear them all the time. And I actually have a video uh, of, uh, of uh, dancing peacocks. And what happens is I think they use these rocks to display and it, you know there are lots of males there, look like a lek, essentially all of the males coming and trying to show off. And then I waited patiently for one, a couple of hours one day and you could see multiple males coming and doing a display dance and everything. This is, this is absolutely beautiful. This is the National Bird of India. <clears throat> this one was a, a beautiful find for me. This is actually called a little grebe, and uh, I absolutely accidentally saw it. Um, there was this um, this tiny little pond, and I saw a, a small bird come in and out of water, and then go onto a nest. And the nest actually had four eggs. So I used to go to the, the walking tour almost every day and carry my camera with me. And then on, on I think the, the 10th or the 12th day of my visit, I found that there were three eggs had gone, there were three chicks, and one of the eggs hadn't hatched yet. And next day morning, all four eggs had hatched, and then you could see the little greeblets actually on the parent's back. And it was up, really beautiful to see the, them fishing and trying to feed. So this was a really interesting uh, display for me. And we have seen this, I think Vinayak was also talking about the horned grebe here. Uh, we also saw the behavior actually in shoreline. So this, this bird is actually called a purple sunbird. And there are several different varieties in, in the tropics, uh, especially in India, there are many, many types of sunbirds. Uh, the purple sunbird actually has uh, like you can see, the whole body is you know very very purple and has got a slight tint of blue and green in there. And um, I have a Sony A1 now with a 600. I just saw this bird fly in and fly out in about 30 seconds, maybe 10 seconds. And I I I don't know why I never do this, but this particular sequence I constantly kept pressing the the, the, the shutter button. Went back and saw the photographs on the on the screen. And within one second, it actually had flown in from some place, grabbed the spider, ate the spider, and then flew away to the next spot. And, and just the sequence, I was absolutely amazed at the A1, but also amazed at the bird that it can do it so fast. In incredible, actually, just to see that. So with that, I think that's the end of the, the presentation, in fact. And um, I'm really, um, happy if anybody has questions for me or for other speakers or any comments and you know how are things going with this group any suggestions happy to take anything i just commented in chat i get peacocks in my house they break in oh, yeah yeah because we get ferals we get ferals up here they're pretty loud yes especially at 4 a.m when they're standing outside my bedroom door 
Ooh. Yeah, Good. but the coyotes, the coyotes do do provide a wonderful service. Oh, man. oh gosh, it's food for them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Cycle of oh boy. Yeah, but the, the, these are. I mean, I I love their display. Actually, you know, you wonder why nature has created this bird with humongous tail feathers and it's such an energy sink for them, but they do it. But they're, well, they're, and they're, they have to be about three years old before they start growing their tail too. Um, sure. But it's where, not. Where it's not nearly as. It's not nearly as bad as mule deer and other deer who grow antlers, though, because they basically get osteoporosis. Oh boy. Sorry, there was another question I think Obi was trying to ask. I was wondering where they were that they come into your yard. <laughs> um, no, they come into my house. We have them break in. We accident. I went to choose. This was a couple years ago. I posted the link to the video in chat. But I had them. I had turkeys out in front of one area of my house getting it on. And I went to take some pictures. And I left the door open. And when I came back in, I sat down. I had my coffee. And about 10 minutes later, I had this heard this really weird noise and I go and look and it's a peacock with a full tail in my house oh my gosh yeah he left and he did not poop in my house yeah that's a plus that was very kind of him I know yeah. he he was very he was he's the only feral that one was the only feral we've had and he was only here for like two weeks before he moved on because there were no girls but he's the only feral we had that actually came up close to the house a lot um, usually they're too skittish. Yeah, yeah the, their display dance is, you know, something to look for. It's just incredible, actually. Well, I think it's where they got the term shake a tail feather. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Or dance like a peacock. All right. Um, this was great. Thank you, everyone. And I will edit the video a little bit and then post it on YouTube and send out the link to everyone. So thanks again for joining. Yep. Good night. Thanks, Rupa. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, fun. all. Good night. Thank you. you. Bye. Thank you. Enjoyed it. Bye. Bye.